Останні роки були дуже плідними для Конгресу українців Канади в ділянці зовнішньої політики КУК, а саме стосунки із урядом Канади. Після довгорічних старань із сторони української громади, канадський уряд проголосив відшкодування за шкоди, вчинені внаслідку інтернування українців під час Першої світової війни. Уряд надав кошти для створення 10-мільйонного меморіального фонду в пам'яті інтернованих. As part of this program, the government of Canada has decided to provide $10 million to the Ukrainian Canadian Foundation of Taras Shevchenko. All of the decisions have been taken by all of the uh, appropriate authorities of the government of Canada, uh, and this is nothing, there's nothing interim or conditional or contingent about what we just signed. The deal is done. Thank you. The funds provided to the Ukrainian Canadian Foundation of Taras Shevchenko will ensure that the hardships of the Ukrainian and other East European Canadians almost a century ago will serve as an example of the prejudices of the past, those that no community, whether in Canada or across the world, should have to face again. В травні 2008 року парламент Канади та п'ять провінційних парламентів Саскачеван, Манітоба, Альберта, Онтаріо та Квебек визнали Голодомор геноцидом проти українського народу та встановили 4 суботу листопада Днем пам'яті жертв Голодомору. Сьогодні відносини між Канадою та Україною розвинуті найкраще від часу проголошення Україною незалежності. It is because of that duty to remember and to call evil by its name that the Senate of Canada unanimously adopted a resolution sponsored by Senator Andrechuk to recognize the Holodomor as a genocide and as a crime against humanity. It's also why the House of Commons will tomorrow debate and vote, vote on Bill C-469 sponsored by Member of Parliament James Bazan, an act to establish a Ukrainian famine and genocide Memorial Day every year. And I am pleased to announce that just a few minutes ago, at a meeting of the Federal Cabinet, chaired by Prime Minister Harper, the Government of Canada took the formal decision to formally and fully support the adoption of this bill recognizing the Holodomor as an act of genocide. Державна візита президента Віктора Ющенка до Канади в травні 2008 року. We covered a range of bilateral and international issues including the further development of political and commercial ties between our two nations. Ukraine's future in NATO and Canada's firm support for her bid for a membership action plan, as well as our cooperation in the UN mission in Afghanistan. I also expressed Canada's deep sympathy for the Ukrainian people as we mark the 75th anniversary of Holodomor. Державний візит її високоповаженості високодостойної Михайл Жон, генерал-губернатора Канади до України у квітні 2009 року. Like uh, the uh... Ukrainian community uh, in, in Canada to know that uh, it is such a pleasure to be here in Ukraine and to celebrate the friendship between Ukrainians and Canadians, between Ukraine and Canada. Robochi visit Premier Minister Canada Stephen Harper to Ukraine in June 2010. Mr. President, let me begin by thanking you and the Ukrainian people for your hospitality. This has been my first visit to Ukraine and has been a pleasure. Canadians have a deep affection for Ukraine and its people, a deep kinship that goes back to the first waves of Ukrainian immigration to Canada more than a century ago. Indeed, Canada has the world's third largest Ukrainian population behind only Russia and Ukraine itself. And it is a source of pride for Canadians that, as you mentioned, in 1991, when Ukrainians won their freedom, Canada was the first Western country to recognize Ukraine's membership in the free world. Конгрес відіграв визначну роль у проведенні усіх цих візитів та активно виступав у ролі радника при їхній підготовці.
just a few weeks after the very successful first ever 24th Ukrainian Canadian Congress in Toronto, attended by leaders of all main Canadian political parties, including a public fireside chat with the Prime Minister of Canada, Mr. Harper, Maidan erupts in Ukraine, setting in motion unbelievable and unprecedented events. The Ukrainian Canadian Congress is at the forefront, organizing local help and sending aid to Ukraine in support for the fight for dignity. High quality, wonderful group of volunteers. A new Ukrainian government is formed and receives the support of the Canadian government. Prime Minister Harper is the first NATO and G7 leader to visit Ukraine in support of the legitimacy of the new government and convinces G8 leaders to expel Russia and to impose sanctions. And while Ukraine may not have a seat at the table, I can assure you, Mr. President, that the situation here will be very high on Canada's agenda. The UCC president becomes the only non-governmental official to be declared persona non grata and sanctioned by Russia. The only Ukrainian that has made it onto Mr. Putin's I love you list. So we introduce, uh, we introduce right now uh, Mr. Uh, Paul Grod, President of the Ukrainian-Canadian Congress. Perfect timing. The UCC President is named among top 100 influencing Canada's global future. The Ukrainian-Canadian Congress is first in the category of diaspora and civil society. UCC, together with our member organizations, actively organize support both from our community and the Canadian government for military, humanitarian and economic support for Ukraine. Subsequently, UCC supports the visit of President Poroshenko and his address to both Houses of Parliament as well as Premier Yatsenyuk's visit to further the free trade agreement. The UCC is proactive in the Canadian federal election campaign in a non-partisan manner to ensure all parties and candidates understand and formally endorse issues of importance to our community. He has built over 50 military bases along Ukraine's border, including air bases. That's why we come back to, we need to provide the proper aid to Ukraine. You need people that understand the situation and people who aren't timid to fight for what is required. Today, the UCC continues its strong advocacy position with the new government, establishing strong relations with the new government and MPs. The Canada-Ukraine Business Forum in June 2016 heralds the beginning of a new era. Attended by the Prime Minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, and the Premier of Ontario, Kathleen Wynne, and hosted by International Trade Minister Christian Freeland, community focus extends to bilateral economic and trade issues between Canada and Ukraine. Because as Prime Minister, I am eager to build on the good work of my predecessors and solidify the warm friendship between our two countries. The Prime Minister, in his mandate letter to me, instructed me to work really, really hard on the free trade agreement with Ukraine. You can imagine I wasn't unhappy to see uh, he's given me a target to aim for by announcing the date of our visit, and I think the time and I will be working very, very hard in the days to come. Just a few short weeks later, the UCC president and the community delegation is invited to join Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on a historic trip to Ukraine to sign the long-anticipated Canada-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement. Uh, this uh, free trade agreement uh, and the work we are going to continue to do uh, investing in Ukraine, uh, having Ukrainians invest in Canada, uh, creating opportunity, creating uh, prosperity through trade uh, is a big piece of why uh, the deal we signed today is going to have a real impact on both of our peoples. Uh, the conflict in the east, uh, the illegal occupation of Crimea uh, weighs heavily uh, not just on Ukrainians but on people around the world who believe that the rule of law and the sovereignty of Ukraine needs to be respected and that's why Canada will always stand with Ukraine. Today, the UCC continues its focus in support of Ukraine, 
rebuilds a youth internship program for Ukrainian Canadian youth in both Canada and Ukraine, and by supporting the free trade agreement, ensures a solid financial foundation for the future.